It is my great honor to welcome Imran Kronk to Startup Help Now. Uh, you are one of our favorite people, health transformer extraordinaire, CEO and co-founder of Ride Health. We're a, uh, an organization that works with healthcare systems, uh, ACOs, and health plans to help them manage transitions of care by helping their uh, patients address transportation barriers. Uh, so we provide a web-based dashboard that allows social workers and care coordinators to arrange transportation using services across the spectrum from on-demand ride sharing to wheelchair accessible uh, vans to uh, ambulances for basic life support and advanced life support for hospital to hospital transfers. My background is really focused on the social aspects that impact people's ability to access care, uh, adhere to that care and, and see good outcomes. Um, the, the program was called Health and Society, so it was a perfect blend of the two. And then some flavor from the business side with healthcare administration and management. Transportation, though, got onto my radar uh, about five years ago when I was a volunteer in a hospital hmm. down in North Carolina, uh, where I'm from originally. And I was a, an emergency department volunteer, and a patient was discharged at about 11.45 p.m. and didn't have a way to get home, he told me. Uh, he was effectively stuck. So I suggested he go over and ask the nurse's station if they could do anything for him. And uh, they said that they couldn't afford that expense for everyone who needed it. And he would have to figure something else out. So this gentleman was maybe 60, 65 years old. He was a bit off balance, staggering. Uh, his vision had been compromised by some medication he had been given during his stay. So no part of this sounded like a good idea for him to just go off into the night. So the only thing that I could think to do was to give him a ride home. And that's what ended up happening. And uh, everything worked out okay, but it was a bit of a weird experience driving a total stranger home in the middle of the night. And it got the gears turning a little bit about why this had had to happen, why there wasn't some sort of solution in place. And that moment was, was kind of when the curiosity began that several years later led to Ride Health's founding with the mission to ensure that every patient everywhere can access the care they need uh, without regard to addressable barriers like transportation. One of the things that makes you special is you're focusing exclusively on, on health uh, in the context of transportation. And I know there are, there's the Ubers and Lyfts of the, the world that are transportation innovation companies. Um, but tell us, tell us a bit more about why it's important. Your, your sort of lens on uh, health is, is so important. You know, there's all kinds of circumstances that arise in uh, different contexts of care where, uh, you know, patients may not be fully able to use a smartphone or a mobile phone, and you may need someone at the facility managing their transportation on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with our clinical contact entities, that's who the drivers actually engage with when they come to pick somebody up for a discharge, for example. Um, or say somebody is going to an appointment and back home, but they only have a home phone. In our system, you use the home phone to communicate with the patient while they're at home, but when they're at the facility, the home phone wouldn't be very useful. So when the ride is set up, the user specifies a clinical contact for that return ride component. Uh, to make it very simple, both for the patient, for the people at the facility, and for the driver. So all of it creates a really simple U user experience, UI, UX. But the technology that, that, that underlies that um, takes an immense amount of clinical understanding and contextual understanding mm -hmm. to figure out who needs to receive what information through what medium mm -hmm. uh, at what time to make a seamless process mm -hmm. from end to end. And transportation is only one piece of that. There's, there's human dynamics that surround it that are important to understand. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate the role of transportation partners, um, including on-demand services, as well as traditional mm -hmm. non-emergency medical transportation companies who have drivers who are trained to help people in and out of vehicles and through the door and, and, and from door to door. Um, and we want them to be empowered to do what they do best. Mm -hmm. And we're going to focus on communication and coordination among everyone else. And the, the potential for, for cost savings here is extraordinary because we all know how expensive an ambulance ride is, mm -hmm. in particular when it's not in, in emergency. Um, so we, we also know how expensive it can be if, if a patient 
misses their physical therapy appointments or, or doesn't even go in to their appointment because of transportation and it set triggers a whole series of events that could lead to greater health issues or more expensive costly health issues um, who are your customers tell us a little bit about obviously it's clear who would the end user of, of your solution is but who are your customers yeah so uh, our customers span quite a spectrum we've built a whole lot of flexibility into our product to meet the organizational and institutional imperatives of a health plan compared with a hospital, compared with an ACO. You know, it goes down to the level of having different funding sources that can be associated with rides so that a hospital that may have a grant program to pay for transportation for certain rides um, is differentiated from when it's the hospital's own operating budget going to that ride. So really diving in and understanding the organizational context uh, I think is critical and having the flexibility to address those related but unique need sets uh, across those segments is, is crucial for us. Walk us into the future uh, and, and how you envision um, this new future because of your, your solution. So our vision really is to create a world where no patient foregoes care due to an addressable barrier like transportation. In the future, we may address other barriers that are considered a part of this broader set of social determinants. Uh, we also see a future where organizations uh, can, can maybe extend care into the community using transportation, um, where a hospital could develop its own fleet and brand it and go around the community uh, picking up and dropping off patients. And if you know, you're talking about autonomous vehicles, how about instead of someone only driving, someone engaging with the patient? in their care before right. and after to reinforce physician advice or to help someone prepare mentally for an appointment. We think that that potential to extend care beyond the four walls of the hospital using quite literally transportation is really compelling. One of the things that I think is, is so interesting is this concept of health innovation. It's not, not always about pure technology. It's about rethinking things. Um, and it's also not always about, say, life science or other aspects of, of uh, pure healthcare, let's say, transportation. You're, re, you're leveraging innovation solutions around transportation to fix a fundamental and major challenge within health. Um, so I, I think that's very important um, to remember mm -hmm. that there's all sorts of extraordinary innovation going on around business model innovation, design innovation, looking at, at new solutions. So congratulations for, for how you guys are thinking. Um, what have been some of your, your biggest surprises or challenges as, as an entrepreneur um, since you launched? I think one of them is the importance of staying as close as possible to your end users and, and, and customers as possible for longer than you think you will need to. Um, you know, after you've explored an area for a year or two years, you might think you've seen everything, but you'll find that you'll be surprised every day. <laughs> and so um, I think uh, really a, a lesson learned and, and that we, we try to instill within the entire team is to, to always continue to be curious, to not think that you've found the right answer. Uh, or that you know all the answers, but to continuously experiment and to have the intellectual humility to embrace problems with the spirit of, I don't exactly know what the answer is, but we're gonna work to find it. Um, I think that's easy to have in the beginning. It's harder to maintain as an organization grows and develops and a business model takes shape. And uh, I think keeping that day one mentality is crucial. So where can people go to learn more about Ride? Well, we're online. We have a website, ride-health.com. We also have um, a, a blog where we write about you know, different uh, aspects of transportation, the history of medical transportation, uh, the, the future, um, you know, how the current state is evolving. Um, we're always happy if you get in touch with us directly to have a conversation about you know, how we can work with your organization. 
uh, to uh, address the, the specific priorities and challenges you're facing. Because if you've seen one organization and their transportation issues, you've seen one organization. Right. <laughs> so true. Everybody's di everyone's different. Well, congrats on all your progress and success and, and very excited about uh, what you guys are doing. So thank you.